Dark Fun Hints, weekly daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, talk about some of the stranger things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and all that other fun stuff. Um, I'm Ben Stone. That is Jill Bryant. And over there is Pedro Mateus with everyone watching us live. Man, it's kind of brilliant. We got a big, chunky show for you today. So buckle up, prepare yourselves, man. But before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on checking in. Um... Pedro, you didn't write anything, so you get to go first, as always. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Aww>. fair. Uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, no, this week has been um, relatively boring, except for that thing, what uh, Ven and myself uh, were talking about yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. We basically, I think we absolutely did talk over all of the important points that Jen uh, Sung <laughs> Very hard to do that. And. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I guarantee you somebody finished watching that and they went, ah, oh, both of them, NVIDIA shells. <laughs> <laughs> guarantee you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> How about you, Jill? Someone. What did you do? <laughs> oh, boy. I was on Linux Unplugged yesterday again, and that's always a lot of fun. And I actually joined in on Sunday um, for the Destination Linux Game Fest, and that was a lot of fun. We played Shell Shock and Golf with Your Friends, and I did pretty good at Shell Shock. <laughs> so I was happy about that. And um, we had fun here at LGC playing Super Text Cart version 1.2 on the Friday night foo bar. So make sure to watch that. It was, that was actually a lot of fun. We had a good yeah, time. That's it's <laughs> always good. We even opened it up. And we had a bunch of people um, come rolling in towards mm -hmm. the end there. Uh, let's see a couple of things. I'm, I'm back playing with Audor 6.2 is out. It's been out for a little bit, but when a new piece of uh, software comes out, especially for like a big critical honking piece of everything I do, I give it a minute before, um, <laughs> Diving into it, uh, it seems like it's able to. One of the big things with um, Adora with the six series was um, plug-in delay compensation through the full chain. Had an issue being able to disable that because that's the last thing I want, and it seems to be working good. We did the stream with the estate, no issue. Uh, I did finish the Mo2 Mark of the Unicorn A28MK2 interface. Uh, Review, testing, all that fun stuff. I've dropped it up for patrons. So if you want an early crack at that, go ahead. It'll go out public. I got to finish all the website stuff probably Friday. Sometimes in there. And uh, also playing with a new compressor. But I'll talk about that later on in the show. Because we have to get to what is quite possibly the worst idea I've seen in recent history. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Well, it's uh, it's got its use case, singular, that I can think of. Uh, so, using the Linux kernel's case sen insensitive feature in EXT4. And this comes from Collabora because, well, they, they seem to always have uh, their mittens in everything related to Linux. And that's a very good thing because they actually do a very good job of it. And yeah, they're talking about uh, why... Uh, would it be uh, case insensitive or, you know, the general uh, concept behind having EXT4 I still or gotta say, a man, variant? This falls directly into the things I would do to mess with people for a thousand. Oh, yes. <laughs> but yeah, no, like the having the um, the general uh, purpose of having a case, a case insensitive variant of EXT4. And... I can think of one use case that would directly, you know, impact uh, myself, which is gaming. Mm. Because uh, if we're talking about gaming, it, that's the Saturday show, so we'll probably talk some more about that then. But here, uh, if you're dealing with games, you usually have to deal with games that were originally programmed for Windows, which is case insensitive, um, games that are being programmed by developers that don't really know what they're doing, aka Unity games, uh, <laughs> broad sweeping statement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they don't care about uh, case is, sensitivity either. Isn't that and right, then... Team Cherry? Creators of Hollow Knight? <laughs> yeah, that's you... one. <laughs> We love you, Team Cherry. Out of how many, uh, out of how many games on Steam? But whatever. I don't know. Uh, the... Keep moving those fields goals, man. Come on. <laughs> like I said, broad sweeping statement. Uh, the 
the um uh, no and mods if you like modding your games and whatnot yeah if you're dealing with case sensitiveness you might drop a file in expecting it to replace a file that's already there like the game expects it to and then you try to launch it and the game crashes because it's like no i found two files with the same name i don't know what to do <laughs> gone <laughs> So yeah, that no, that's sometimes. the um, <laughs> that's yeah. my use case that I see for it. Though I will admit that it's probably going to be a bit of a hard sell. If what about this? Pedro? You're just going what to about this? change. <laughs> yeah. Although, to be fair, most of the uh, Portuguese stuff what I have going on on my um, it's talking about the um non-english languages utf-8 is kind of a big thing uh especially if in case uh those any kind of software that's expecting a unicode compliant um file path if you have anything with like accents uh on letters or any kind of non-unicode characters all of a sudden you have a problem mm. so yeah utf-8 compatibility is it's a it's a very big thing it is, absolutely. But... One of the things that we definitely want to talk about is <laughs> this is not going to sneak into your system. It's not. You have to format a drive in order for mm -hmm. the um, business to get in there. I'm just going to call it the business, man. Uh, then, like, you can enable it for, like, certain directories, though. Isn't that right? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can enable it if you set a uh, directory-specific partition of sort i know we talked about it and this would just knacker because that's part of my like filing system is like that's capped that's not same thing yeah that's same here man. <laughs> yeah, same here for for me if that's enabled it would you know having to remember not to have to use case sensitivity would be the hard part because i'm always going to use case sensitivity because i'm using linux not ms dos <laughs> so <laughs> that would be, you know, that that's a thing. But I understand, you know, it for ease of use for, you know, those people coming over from Windows and <laughs> make it a little easier for them. <laughs> but those of us who've been using Linux and Unix for a long time, it's probably not going to happen. It's oh terrifying. God. I will continue <laughs> yeah. to yell at my clouds. Uh, <laughs> so yesterday, uh, the sentient leather jacket walked out on stage and said hey <laughs> give us some money fam and i went nay hey, you don't you don't have exactly what i want i'm being very particular we're talking about the nvidia 30 series release because that was the thing me and pedro we did a live stream we talked over the important bits that was kind of fun and i'm sure you can tell we just love nvidia Mm -hmm. What do you have to look at, man? I mean, you can go watch the VOD on YouTube or uh, Twitch if you want, but they basically talked about the 3090, the 80 series, and the 70s. They were all on show. The leather jacket showed them. They were hiding in his kitchen, man. Must be nice. But only the 90 series and the 80 got the new moon cooler. I was like, aw, boo. Because the only thing remotely of interest to me was the 3070 at 599. Because got to think about it in video or not mm -hmm. that's going to make amd's life very difficult considering yes according to nvidia it outperforms a 2080 ti so that's kind of interesting now i wished it had 10 gigs of the memory ram at 599 again we should point out these things are priced for nvidia pricing it was like wow this is reasonable um yeah but we saw a leak that there's going to be a 3070 Ti with 16 gigs, and if that's $100 more, I'm probably going to have to buy one. I want to know if, like, the Amper, um, if they're using new and VN code chips compared to Turing, man. They didn't say anything about that, which I found they did not. a little bit curious since they mm. spent so much time on software we'll never get on Linux for, like, the RTX Studio with all that other fun stuff. Are, are yeah, the noise excited? removal and the background blurring and background replacement. But yeah, they didn't specifically. They yeah. did not say anything about anything. Like Nova said, <laughs> for the thirty seventy. Now, looking at it, two completely different views. Pedro would be primarily focused on gaming, but you're the ones that Nvidia is trying to get to buy these with a ten series. Because yes, let's be honest, RTX clearly. on Turing <laughs> was not a compelling. 
upgrade from the yeah. 10 series. It just wasn't. <laughs> there were even slides where they just took out the 20 series that Jensen was just showing. Look, it's this much better than your 10 series. And you have a 1080. Yeah. So. 10 series. And then you had the, oh, the 3070 is like better than the 2080 Ti, which is all the way over there in $1,200 land. It's like, mm -hmm. yes, yes, it is. It's like, oh, it's going to be four ninety nine. It's like, <laughs> you were that close. Drop hmm. those ninety nine, and you got yourself a deal. And you can kind of joke around. I, I see what you're saying. You know, eight K, four K, one hundred twenty hertz. No, nah, man, thirty ninety can definitely do eight K. Um, and mm -hmm. they were showing off their new monitors. What was three hundred and eighty hertz? Three hundred and sixty. Three hundred and sixty. Uh. Yeah, Which, there's um, one monitor currently in the market that does mm -hmm. 360, and it 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 don't even look at that price. It it no, <laughs> dude. Yeah, but I, I love the idea though. Uh, yeah, with, with the new refresh rate, simply because all the people that uh, friends and family too. I'm not making too much fun of you. Like you gotta get the 144, man. You just gotta get it. It's game changing. All of a sudden, everybody who's invested in that, like. Oh, that's ridiculous. You don't need anything more than 144. Come on, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and then I do agree with you. I, I noticed the lack of compute in AI in any of the presentation yesterday. It's almost like the 20 series, they were so focused on that that they maybe not didn't get as many sales in the in the gaming area as you know, because of their marketing, the way they marketed the cards. Well, it so wasn't it's... that big of an improvement. The big thing was like, hey, yeah, it can do ray tracing and it's got Turing and we have RT cores. See, it's better. Yeah, mm -hmm. it did do path tracing, <laughs> ray tracing, which is uh, superior in many ways. The new series right. is a genu mm -hmm. genuine upgrade path, even from Turing, because Turing wasn't that much better than Pascal. But uh, if they can deliver a $600 uh because I'm looking at it from, I need them CUDA cores, and I want the memory Correct. RAM. So I, I was yeah. complaining on Twitter a couple of weeks back. I'm like, can we get a consumer graphics card with 16 gigs for under $1,000? <laughs> we just might. Maybe the 3070 Ti, like the rumors are saying now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, man, I, I'd be happy with it. And for all the wrong reasons, because <laughs> I'll be doing 1080p gaming on it. <laughs> yeah, no, I like my 2K 144 gaming very much. This monitor has uh, absolutely spoiled me. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, no, that 3070 is like laser targeted at me. Except for <laughs> yes. the price. I'm not paying $500 for a video card. I'm sorry. Just, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just just wait a few weeks after all the initial stocks gone. Then you can have the option to pay six, seven hundred for the same card. Don't care. Not buying it. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but you could definitely Yay. use the new cards with the new cores and all the touring. Better pro touring. I still I like touring. That was a good name. But uh -huh. Ampere. Are we doing yeah, Ampere? Yeah, Ampere. Yeah. <laughs> you can use that to blend blend away. Yeah, and speaking of GPU compute, so Blender 2.90 has just been released, and it you know it builds on the polish of of the 2.8 series of releases of Blender, and it has lots of improvements, you know, including like oh gosh, updates to everything to the EV and cycles renderers, modeling, modifiers, and animation. And it's got a lot faster motion blur rendering now because it's using Intel's Ombre CPU enhanced ray tracing engine. And uh, that'll speed things along if you're using an Intel uh, Xeon. And one of my other favorite things is there's a new denoising panel to enable the Intel denoiser in the 3D viewports in this release. So the denoiser doesn't have to be just used for rendering, but it can be used in the 3D viewports. And I'd been playing with the, the betas of this, of this release, and it works really well. And there's just, there's so much in here. It, it's hard to go through it all. Um, the modeling has been kicked up a notch. Just everything, uh, smoothing of surfaces, uh, lots of new, uh, um, better UV maps and uh, modifiers for the Man, clock. I look forward to the nightmares tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
And thank you. And Fox Dog once again for letting us, letting us know about this new release. He always Wait, lets us know. Wait, are you saying Foxy <laughs> told us about the Blender news? What? Yeah, mm, I kind of already knew, of so. course. But <laughs> <laughs> of course, but Foxy is the one that that puts it in chat first before I even find it. So, so that's the thing, man. I'm really excited to see the NV link. Uh, yes, this, I, I'm just excited mm -hmm. for Blender. Uh, definitely this year so far. One good thing out of 2020, man. They've just getting in such high gear, great sponsors, and just a bunch of fantastic things, man. Makes me very happy. It yes. really does. Yes. Uh, it's awesome, because it's really set it apart from, like, Maya and 3D Studio that are taking a lot longer to iterate. You know, with, with the beauty of open source is with Blender, they're able to iterate so much quicker with these technologies. I know. A uh, lot, lot more definition <laughs> of my jiggly people. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's good. That's good to see. Uh, what do we have up next? Oh, this is this is kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah. This is awesome. You thought you thought <laughs> Blender 3D video cards, all that was exciting. Hmm, save the good stuff for last, man. Hitstop <laughs> 3.0 is out, and this is from the new team. Now, not the original developers. Like, man, I've had enough doing this. It's fixed. It's done. It's perfect. With his blessing, uh, this is the new team that, uh, well, the new maintainers, I should say. Bunch of things in here. Uh, the biggest ones that I picked out is there's a Vim mapping mode. Again, only to mess with your friends. Go ahead and set that up. Uh, but from the outside, I went ahead and built it, uh, launched it. Like, hey, this looks exactly the same. I can't tell it's different until I started digging around with some of the other, you know, there's a couple of bug fixes and stuff like that. But on the surface, man, um, it's great. It works. Uh, also, distribution maintainers. Ship HTOP, please. We want to talk about legitimately the first thing I go. Why is that uh, here? Install? Yep. HTOP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> HTOP, I, I, control. I yeah. never exactly. remember to install it first, but it's that first not found. I'm like, oh, right. Why isn't this... <laughs> Aww. Yeah, but there no, is support they, for they the ZFS. Nano, so... Arc Sisters, yeah. uh, what else? Did we get anything crazy in here? Um, disable the mouse. Okay, Solaris 11 compatibility. That's also a thing. That's kind Hardware of Hardware topology. Yeah. You yeah. actually get some topology information directly from the paddle. New display options <laughs> to nice. show CPU frequency and the meters. That's uh, yeah, that's update really Linux cool. SFS battery discovery for recent kernels. All right. A lot <laughs> yeah. of BSD fixes. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy, though, that we have an update, you know, because this project was forked, you know, thank goodness for forks. <laughs> so we'll get continued updating. <laughs> well, to, some people think about that in kind of a strange way. Uh, I, when it comes to like building a system, I'm 100% uh, not broke, don't fix. Mm -hmm. And I think HTOP pretty much fell into mm -hmm. that. And you will definitely see packed, yeah. you know certain applications, open source projects. I'm like, well, this hasn't been updated in two years with me immediately followed by it not broke. Yes. I mean, find a yes. bug. <laughs> uh, it, you go to the issues and like none, like it, it, it's baked. It's good. It's great. So, but if you like bugs, oh boy. Oh, the guys and girls at OBS <laughs> studio, OBS project, OBS.org. They have a new release candidate, 26 point not, RC1, it's out. New features, new additions. Uh, a couple of the big ones in here, uh, the one I played with, I made a little video about it, is the RN noise hotness. If that's enabled, uh, you got to build the bits for it. you got to go by, I'll just go watch uh, the YouTube video. Uh, there's a link to how to get that set up. Now, I couldn't make much use of it. I, I was kind of sad when I played around with the RN noise library, simply because uh, a not insignificant range of my voice is fairly inhuman. And it doesn't register with our noise, so there's just like random silence, and it sounds like I have like a heavy gate put on. Mm -hmm. But there's a bunch of bug fixes with Linux, which is good. They're even sort of the issue with like the V4L2, your webcam stuff not working correctly with the pan tilt controls. I was glad to see that. And uh, one thing should be in there. I haven't built, uh, I always just build directly off master, but... This should, because I, I don't know of any technical issues, have the web browser built into it off of a recent CEF build that just doesn't poop memory the entire time it's running, like the OBS Linux browser plugin, which hasn't been updated in 
two years because you know, reasons they do mention that in the fixes uh fix an issue where the browser source could crash when browsing files but yeah it's uh it's good to see but i will absolutely wait for the um i should have qualified what, <laughs> what i put in the notes there <laughs> because <laughs> i said <laughs> that's like okay i'll wait for the ppa release and Ben's like check the second like okay no my bad the stable for my PPA. brothers and sisters on Debian, I suggest <laughs> I, I made a guide for just building it from source. That's the best way to do it. But if you were looking for a PPA, there is an unstable branch. So we link the show note to the Reddit thread to where that's available. And um, that's legit. Go test away. As always, if you choose to run OBS as a flat pack or a snap, please <laughs> do us a favor and stay out of the OBS Discord. It will not, uh, you will not receive support for either of those. Not my rules. I'm me. just repeating them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? I think that's it. Oh, yeah. SRGB support. That's the thing. That's kind of brilliant. And uh, yeah, just, just go play with it. Try to break it. That's what a release candidate is for. And they're saying a yep. couple of weeks and we might get uh, 26 official, which I think is neat. But very nice. Uh, this is a pine phone. One thing I do want to ask you before we get to the pine phone story. Uh, did you ever have any luck with the uh, Make a Pine Book 64 usable script that I put in Discord? I did. Okay. And then I uh, broke whatever <laughs> install uh, there was on the EMMC by doing something else completely unrelated. Mm. Uh, and now um, I've had to order one of the USB like uh, EMMC module adapters to reflash it outside because it's currently not booting. Oh, nice. <laughs> it was like 10 pounds, so... All right. You fixed it hard. <laughs> I fixed it real good. <laughs> yeah, so speaking of PinePhone, you know, last July, uh, Pine64 released the community edition of the PinePhone with post-market OS. Um, they released the phone and the convergence pa package with the uh, USB-C dongle. And now we have the same phone models and the same kit and caboodle with the Manjaro Linux pre-installed which is really 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 cool i mean i've been so impressed with pine 64 what a what a way for for us enthusiasts to test software on their hardware uh, by by letting us choose which distros we want pre-installed on them and then you know it's still easy to to put an sd card in it with any image of any of your favorite linux distro so that's just awesome and this uh, release comes with the same hardware as the previous one. So it's $149 for the 2 gig of RAM, 16 gigabyte eMMMC flash drive, and $199 for the 3 gig of RAM with the dongle. So that's really a sweet price for testing out the phones. <laughs> really sweet. Yeah. With those 3 gigs, <laughs> you should have enough uh, memory to play around with anything other than manjaro <laughs> yeah i'm just speaking from the experience i had on the yeah. uh, on the pine book pro where a week mm -hmm. in of me basically just trying to use it not even touching anything at that point just trying to use it every now and then it's like oh there's updates okay i'll just use the gui and hit update yes and do that <laughs> and about a week in um kde stopped letting me log in yeah i had to uh completely wipe my um home folder and start from scratch because whatever it did it wouldn't even let me log in it anymore so listen man i yeah. personally don't have a problem with a product that <laughs> keeps you on your toes <laughs> yeah well manjaro you know my my experience too pedro i've got it installed on a couple laptops and it's like every other day i've got to update it or it things will break that that's just how it is with arch <laughs> and a rolling release <laughs> it's a pretty good piece of kit. I, I want to thank our for throwing that in there and uh i just can't justify carrying around i do not carry a mobile with me i haven't for like the last decade i'll carry a tablet with me but what yes yes <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to carry around two. <laughs> oh yeah, one plus one has all the distros on it. <laughs> this one's a dual sim. Uh huh. 
Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, three <laughs> <Cool>. sims. <laughs> and I thought I couldn't think less of you. Um, <laughs> one year with a ThinkPad and Linux, difficulty multiplier from a MacBook Pro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Frederick uh, decided, you know what? Let's uh, give it a try, this uh, Linux thing, see if I can get through a whole year of using Linux and learn it properly with a ThinkPad T480, which honestly is a very good choice as far as Linux laptops go. The T4 series, usually it would be my go-to um, recommendation. My first thought, if you're just looking. I got completely distracted when I looked at the web zone page it simply because it's like, that's a lot of money. Planes? And, um, chisels. <laughs> like uh, woodworking tools? Yeah. <laughs> All of them? <laughs> Those things are expensive because I've knackered enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had to replace yeah. them. <laughs> uh, I Frederick have decided <laughs> to go with Fedora using um, GNOME and sometimes i3. And um, yeah, he apparently uh, had a not terrible experience. Uh, a lot of things were working great, but uh, according to him, what hasn't was uh, it's like battery is not like Mac. Uh, can't debug issues in Safari. Can't do iOS development. Need a VM with uh, Windows to sync uh, his Sun 2 GPS watch. I'm sorry. Uh, touchpad is not close to Mac. Uh, emoji support is not 100%. And some video conference tools can be a bit glitchy until you get the setup right. I don't think that's different in... Okay, maybe in <laughs> Mac. It sort of figure, figures it out for you. Uh, but yeah, I don't think that's different. Not after having to deal with as many teams and uh, Skype for Business issues as I have since I started uh, Allow me working. to introduce you to my friend, <laughs> Haiku. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? You want GPU acceleration? Yeah. You're not getting it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, WebRTC is, it, it can be finicky on any platform. So that's just <laughs> truth. <laughs> but yeah, our beloved ThinkPads, you know, they're really the mobile toolkit for the Linux community. Almost every Linux enthusiast I know has one. <laughs> and some of us have two, three, four, some, some of us 10 or more. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I recommend those uh, laptops to developers from switching from Mac, Macs. And one of the reasons is they have such a beautiful keyboard and all the hardware is just supported out of the box. And, and, you know, for this, what was really cool for this user, you know, the, to find that that's always the, the challenge when you move to Linux, you got to find the great open source alternatives to the proprietary software you used, you're used to using. And once you find that, then it's like, oh, now I have a system I can use. <laughs> and uh, yeah, sometimes the software is just different names, but yeah, come over to Linux. I think more and more <laughs> what we're seeing is a lot of times the software, because what passes for native build, it's called Lectron these days. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> True. <laughs> a lot of it's cross-platform. Even your big heavy stuff. I do in music production. Most major DAWs, with the possible exception of um, Ableton, because whatever, man. Uh, but your Bitfig, uh, Reaper, what I use, Adore. That's up. It's working. Uh, video production, you have DaVinci Resolve. Now, I think the biggest uh, with DaVinci Resolve is they would like money for their product. So... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. And I don't have an issue with closed source applications because everything's Correct. like, you need to open source. And like, uh, is that Steam you're running in the background there? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's different because that's the arbitrary line that I've drawn in the sand to make my argument. Like, oh, that's good. Bye-bye. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good on him. Uh, good for sticking with it. Linux is easy to run. I mean, if you need to get off Mac, you don't want to pay the Mac tax and... You don't want to deal with the nonsense that is Windows, man. Uh, most certainly, every alphabet agency known to humankind has access to. I'm booga booga fear mongering. <laughs> I don't know that for a fact, but come on. What if that turned out to be? I wonder how much a backdoor costs nowadays. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I it, it's always curious when I see like a update push to, to fix something that's been an issue for six years, and I'm like, oh, okay, they finally got something new. Um, <laughs> but on the topic of music production, I wanted to give this a little plug. We're using it for the show right now. This 
as it rolls off the tongue, is the ACM 510 from Applied Computer Music Technologies Limited, a professional DSP software and plugin development. I just saw this. This is a uh, software compressor. It's kind of nice, man. Uh, I liked it. You know, it's flexible. It's console grid. So, you know, it's channel compressor, analog warmth, character. That's their plug, and it's cheap. It's 30 pounds. It might have been 34 pounds yesterday when I bought it. I'm um, not saying anything. <laughs> but I like this. It's only available for Linux. You can use this. Uh, it comes as an LV2 plug-in. Smooth controls. If you look at the interface, it doesn't have like this crazy bizarre moon interface. That makes me happy, man, because I don't... A skeuomorphic UI can just die in a fire. I like this. This looks like a standard compressor stack. I know what I'm dealing with. Uh, it's got switchable high chain, uh, high pass filters. It works. Rotary controls. You turn them. They do the compress. Uh, they do the debeginning and embeginning. It's available, as I said, as a VST2, 64-bit. All the fun stuff is there. You're not into music production, whatever. We're using it. It's working pretty good. It's very light on CPU, which I like. Doesn't add any delays. What got my attention with this? I'm just not bringing this up. Yeah, I, I don't, it's me. I don't get, hand out. Like, here's your free plug. Is I was in the outdoor forums and I just don't post. It's like, hey, man, uh, here's what I'm working on because the commercial version, now this is commercial, it's not open source. It, this guy also does the Overtone DSP system, which is cross platform. And someone wrote back, like, hey, uh, I do some music production on Linux. Uh, but I also use Windows, and I would like to use this. I would like to use the ACM 510 on Windows, to which he wrote back. He's like, there's no plans for cross-platform at the moment. With Outdoor 6 increasingly solid Linux support now available, and some commercial DOS. I was talking about, I'm really hoping Linux can finally begin to take its rightful place in Pro Audio. So, in a way, this is his bet on that happening. Some of uh, professional-grade plugins that are going to be released Linux only I was like yay I like that <laughs> made me happy ish right. I don't know I don't know if I'm capable <laughs> of that feeling but I think I did <laughs> I apparently think, you are you just had a bit of a Freudian slip there <laughs> I think I, do, I was capable of like 0.5 happy yeah <laughs> possibly oh, you mean like the CPU utilization that NVIDIA claims uh, uh, the new series will only use uh, 0.5 <laughs> sure right after they get done uh, enabling the new NV encode for Linux from two years ago <laughs> one of these days because <laughs> NVIDIA you gotta do that nobody on the core team at OBS is gonna be able to do that for Linux it's not gonna happen okay <laughs> We got a Microsoft moment. We, we do. do. Yeah, okay. yes, Microsoft do. loves Linux. <laughs> yeah, it does. Look at them. Ah, big hugs all around, baby. They yeah. love Linux so much, uh, they're already trying to butt in and change something that's been relatively established. Now you could make the argument that maybe, maybe it's a little bit antiquated, and I do think that's very much uh, what uh, Sarah Novotny here is trying to do. She is the representative uh, for Microsoft uh, within the Linux Foundation. And she made some comments. It's like a uh, text-based, email-based patch system that uh, can also be presented um, in a way that developers who have grown up in the last five to ten years are more familiar with. Meaning, it's like, yeah, that mailing list, it's not cutting it anymore. The kids want Discord. The kids want Slack. The kids want... <laughs> whiz-bang, wishy-wooshy stuff on screen the whole time. I'd be using other words if this was Saturday, but I can't, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so it, it seems that Microsoft uh, has very much moved on from the whole embrace thing, since they are effectively running the uh, Linux kernel in Windows 10. You could just have the Linux kernel running in it. And now they've moved on to the extend phase. <laughs> it's like they're trying to improve on the things that are already there. It's like that that you're not going to ingratiate yourself to people if you're going to try and push your way of thinking do, down their dude, throats. Here, I, I love this <laughs> simply because uh, basically everyone in the kernel development team is like, you know what? Oh, you're angry. You know what? Hmm. Good. Because... <laughs> 
this Microsoft like knackered their plain text support outlook. They did. It's messed <laughs> up. It's bad. So watching Microsoft come in and go, the, the plain text workflow is just too difficult to use now. And it requires using you know, this. HTML. But the, they're worried that people would be using another email client outside of Outlook to contribute. Yeah. Like everyone is? <laughs> yes. And not Outlook. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Microsoft wants people using Outlook, uh, which is nothing short of ironic considering how horrible a piece of software uh, that thing is. The I, I, I'm sure everyone at LKML and then Linux Scroll Mailing just had a ginormous hearty laugh at that. Yeah. Well, you know, there's lots of reasons why the Linux Kernel, kernel mailing list uses uh, ASCII email. Yeah, it's keep the it, newbies it, out. Yeah, it, yeah, that too. Why would you want to support that, Jill? That's gatekeeping. Yeah. Well, well, you even did it here on LGC when we used to have to use IRC to communicate. That's not and... an excuse for bad behavior, Jill. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he did it, so I can do it, right? Right. right? Yes. That's how it goes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, with the, the ASCII email, you know, it looks the same. The um, English American ASCII looks the same on everyone's monitor. Not to mention it's more secure. I mean, security, security, right? And, you know, it's just, this is how the Linux kernel mailing list, you know, they've done it. This is the way the developers have been doing it for years. And how hard is it really to use Thunderbird or Squirrel Mail? I mean, come on. <laughs> So. The conspiracy theorist in me right now is just going, wait a second, do you think it's because they want to track people that no. they're trying to get them away from? No. <laughs> never it's not. never attribute to malice no. um, what is adequately explained by stupidity. Yeah. I think the takeaway from this is our moral of the story is Microsoft. Of all companies, sweethearts. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be handing out device when it comes to software development. Just exactly. <laughs> no. no. Nailed oh, it, man. No. I, it. You can, it's like, <laughs> at court example, it will be Skype. Okay. So yeah, don't tangle with me on that. Um, hey, everyone. If you want to tangle with us, like the other six days of the week, you can do that. Uh, we're community financed and funded by you at home. Our beautiful patrons who make their show possible. It's patreon.com forward slash letting team cast. Head over to linuxgamecast.com. Use the search engine because <laughs> I use it all the time. I had to find something this morning and I'm like, I'm glad I spent time making that thing work correctly. We have uh, like PayPal, we got LibrePay, we got uh, Amazon Wishlist, which both of these wonderful Yahoos have like some weird, <laughs> crazy stuff on. It's kind of brilliant. I'm digging it. Uh, Help me buy a new TV. Yeah. I have uh, just basically. I got a, a 2070 on there. 2070 Super Mini. Basic things for the studio <laughs> setup. Uh, if you help with that nonsense, which a lot of you have, and uh, it's <laughs> baffling, but you have, you're up on the board, you read a note, all that fun stuff. Uh, hey, we do give you a couple of perks if you're going to take the time and like kick us a buck a week. That's kind of brilliant or more than that. Uh, the perks increase, but uh, we have like extra live video streams on Saturday when we do the pre-pre super shows and that's available in podcast format. Head over to Discord. That's where we're hanging out. Check out that announcements tab. Like if you want this show, it's going to be out at least the video version as I'm waiting on YouTube to ingest the uh, uncut version. It's going to be out like two hours early. So if you want to grab that, that'll be there. And uh, a bunch of other things like show notes. We keep on saying, hey, this story was added by X, Y, Z. That's because we open our show notes up for our patrons. Like, hey, if you want to come scream at us and uh, tango with us in notes, fight for your ideas or tell us we're wrong. That's a thing, too. So uh, thank you. Keep being awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Maths. Ooh. Uh, that's uh, a slice not, of pie not I do not want to tango with. <laughs> yeah, not quite a quarter. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so this is, oh, this is really awesome. This, <laughs> you know, we've, uh, we've talked about how cool it would be to have a mini version of an ATX case for the Raspberry 5, uh, a little mini gaming rig version and now we have it this gentleman has made a beautiful little click click case included oh calm down Jill. the only reason you like it is because it's got so rgbs 
<laughs> got excited. <laughs> yes, it's got our RGB uh, fans in the front, and it's got a clear side panel, and it even has a. Uh, they he even made a little uh, GPU. Uh, 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 a, a GPU model for the for the slot for the PCIe slot with a slot. working fan <laughs> with a working fan <laughs> and <laughs> and it there it's beautiful and yeah, the whole time I was reading this article and looking at the video is is it would just be nice if it was a big bit bigger to accommodate Pedro's Raspberry Pi for ice tower oh, yeah. cooler that I got him. <laughs> that would be cool if it, it supported that just a little bit bigger to support the ice tower, a little wider. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it just so has cute. to be like, you know, full pie size. And um, I have this all mapped out in my head. So like this would go towards the back, like this side with the uh, the. Uh, micro hdmis and the type c and the headphone jack and uh, the usbs and the ethernet would go to the bottom which would then be routed to the front of the case via some <laughs> teeny tiny little extensions and yeah no that i have this all mapped out it it, it could work it just needs to be scaled up a bit more yeah. Pedro, Pedro would do all that. i would take the heat sink and tap it with a torch until it got a bend like there, <laughs> it's only got the one heat pipe, so yeah, yeah it'd be pretty easy to yeah, bend. <laughs> it would. Yeah, and of course, your high-end games you can you know or stream a... with the. A... Oh, there you go. <laughs> I think that's neat. That. That. <laughs> it's, it's small but functional. Yes, and it, 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 it just looks neat. So, and plus, it's, it's got, so awesome. It doesn't blink. and it's actually got active cooling. It's got yes. two uh, 40 mil fans so cool. in the front. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. That that that's better than most cases out there. <laughs> yeah, and you you know you can stream with it using the the Valve uh, uh, Link uh, software under Raspbian, and there's other streaming softwares out there too for it. Because <laughs> obviously you can't play a lot of the games he was playing natively on the Pi. It's not powerful enough yes. that you can stream them. <laughs> well, it's definitely one of those things where you set it up and you're like, oh, that's neat. Okay, we're done. But yeah. <laughs> I want to ask you this. One thing I've personally always wanted from my wheelie bin was to add the ability to, I don't know, attack my neighbors. <laughs> this is so, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> you can. You oh. absolutely can. See, it should be easy enough to change the uh, little image uh, recognition <laughs> software that uh, this person made. Uh, what's his name? Ahat Cove. Uh, and he made a little bit of uh, image recognition <laughs> software and attached it to uh, the motor and servo that he had on his willy bin. Uh, basically, what it does is it checks to see if there's a trash um, or a lorry, uh, yeah, a bin lorry, uh, as they call them here, or uh, the trash truck going past uh, his... Um, his street and if there is then the wheelie bin walks itself or rolls itself as the case may be outside to be picked up and yeah that that's that that's actually kind of genius especially if you don't have a place to this and i, I went over this <laughs> entire project very thoroughly and there was one thing that made me a little sad and the one critical flaw i should say is this thing does not Screech, exterminate. <laughs> Very true, Ben. <laughs> also, it's going to be hilarious when something goes just slightly wrong and it rips off into the um, oncoming traffic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the I'm, um, I, I, the just insult. One I, I'm watching this in the first, my first thought when I'm seeing the video is like I would make it avoid the... Um, Garbage truck and make it back up. <laughs> oh, as soon as someone gets out to like to pick it Brush up and it dump it, it, yeah, as soon it as runs arm, away. As soon as the arm comes down, it would slide back a little bit. But I'm a horrible human being. Um... Oh, well, I like the in trash can camera for when it dumps in the and that. So that's the first time you could see inside a garbage truck. <laughs> Just watch the trash falling from it. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> That's kind of brilliant. Hey, we're running long. We got to get out of here. Uh, if you want to send us some emails, how can they do that, Pedro? They could do that very, very easily. Well, there are many ways you can send us emails. I'm not going to talk about most of them because, again, it's Wednesday, so we can't talk about it. But if you go to LakesGameCast.com, you hit the contact button, fill out the form, 
pick L, uh, LWDW as the show that you'd like to send some What if I'm a spammer to? and I'm manually like six times? I went and checked uh, <laughs> like the spam logs the other day. It was this one dude too. It wasn't a bot. You're not going to bot your way through this. And he kept on trying different <laughs> variations to get through our spam golem. Didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, if you're really, really stubborn, by all means, keep trying. It's not like anything that I'll say will change your mind. But if you aren't that stubborn, then maybe you could read the thing at the top. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, just put the one link. It's like, th there, the one link and... Don't yes, put a link. As you possibly can. Or no links at all, even better. <laughs> you don't need to send us links. We know how to Google. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, no, give us the Eli 5 on how to Google uh, for your thing. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. Leave us a Stand comment on, on YouTube, anything like that. Uh, or just come screech at us in Discord. Mm -hmm. We're there. We're live We're doing that thing. And uh, we'll get back to you on um, all the places but we gotta get out of here we do yeah we gotta roll credits we gotta run oh no yes, yes. let's see if this works oh <laughs> steve husband so much trash talk for a wednesday <laughs> true that <laughs> <laughs> and katana it's trash day at your house <laughs> <laughs> so you had you heard the sound of it. <laughs> alternately, alternately, you could make it scream. Why was I programmed to feel pain? I would find that acceptable. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just scream, father. <laughs> uh, or you no, can do the father scream. It's trash day. No! <laughs> it's trash day here too. <laughs> Thanks to our producers, our executive producers make this show possible. Up to and including Yay! the shameless plug segment. Yeah, next Power Shell on Linux. Power Shell on Linux. One times. Mm. <laughs> mm, what? Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking. It's, it's been a while since Stratos complained about the uh, misalignment. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's true. It's always there <laughs> waiting for uh -oh. you, baby. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now that Pedro mentioned it. <laughs>